Hey guys, Michelle from Michelle's Craft Corner here, and in today's video we're going to be making this card using the Painted Harvest stamp set. Let's get started! So here's a close-up of that card that we're going to be making today. I really love how it turned out, just perfect for the fall and Thanksgiving with these cute little acorns and that burlap ribbon. I really do think it turned out great. So to make this one, we're going to be using the Painted Harvest stamp set. Now this is a great stamp set. A lot of people tend to focus on the sunflowers in this set and the leaves, which of course are awesome because we have a coordinating punch, so it's available as a bundle. But a lot of people are kind of ignoring the adorable little acorns in this set. And there's also these really nice ferns. So I wanted to feature those in this card today. But of course those are also in the set, so you could kind of mix up the card as well. So besides the Painted Harvest Bundle, we're also gonna be using a couple different ink colors. We're gonna be using the Always Artichoke. Actually, let me move my sticky note down there. You can see it a little better. The Always Artichoke, the Old Olive for our leaves. For some sponging and also the tops of our acorns, we're gonna be using the Crumb Cake. And then for the base of the acorns, and our words, we're going to be using the chocolate chip. So not too many colors today. And then, of course, we're also going to be using this gorgeous burlap ribbon. I absolutely love this. This makes such a nice statement on cards. Very kind of rustic, country looking. I've seen a lot of really cute stuff with this. So we're going to be using a little bit of this today. Our paper colors. We're going to be using the Always Artichoke as our card base. Some of the chocolate chip. I guess I forgot to grab a post note for that. Some chocolate chip for our little border. And then some very vanilla for both the front and inside. We are also going to be using this awesome new punch for our sentiment. And we're also going to be doing a little bit of sponging just on the edges here. So I've got my Stampin' Sponge handy. Some multi-purpose liquid glue. And then um, our Pierce Mat. Just for those photopolymer stamp sets to get um, a little more clean stamp. And the last thing is I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a little bit of tape for my ribbon. So let's work on this card. This is going to be a really pretty simple, quick and easy one. So let's clear here. All right, so we're gonna start with our piece of very vanilla cardstock. And this is cut at five by three and three fourths. So kind of one of my standard sizes. I'm gonna post a note off there. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and start with the little acorns. Now, what I love about the acorns is they fit really well on our size A blocks. Uh, but of course, you can put them on a bigger block as well, but the smaller block is a little easier to use. So I've got my chocolate chip here and my crumb cake. Oh, and just put my finger in it. There we go, okay. Um, something else you guys might be thinking is, well, because it's got a top and a bottom, can't you just put them on the same block? Well, you can't really get away with that because there's a little bit of an edge, if you can see that, around the stamp So on both of them. So if you try to put them on the same block, you're going to actually have a space between the top of the acorn and the bottom. So really a lot better to do them separate. It doesn't really matter which one you do first, whether it's the base or the top. So we're just going to do the base real quick. And I did about three acorns in each opposite corner and kind of stamped them going in different directions. I think it kind of looks a little more, I don't know, creative, hodgepodgey, just kind of like that. But keep in mind, you can always add more. All right, so we've got our base of the acorns. And now we're gonna do the little tops with the crumb cake. Nice thing with the photopolymer is you can see exactly where you're stamping. Oh, and I am not using my pierce mat. Shame, shame, shame. Let me slide that back under here. It's a little more noticeable on the leaves. All right, we're just gonna line that up and stamp it on top. 
And actually, it's a little darker than I like, so I'm going to stamp this next one off. So stamp it on the paper, and then stamping it on top. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. Just like that. You can see how those turned out. Stamp off again. And since I did one full, I'm going to do another full in the opposite corner just for symmetry. All right, there we go. So now we've got our basic leaves. Now we're going to go ahead and, or basic acorns, excuse me. Now we're going to grab the leaves. Now the leaves um, have a background leaf and a more detailed top layer leaf. If you don't want to, you can get away with just stamping the more solid one, but I kind of like the texture look of the two-tone. So we're going to be using the Old Olive and the Always Artichoke. Let's go ahead and open this up. So for our base, we always do the lighter color on the base for two tones, and then the more darker color for the detail on top. So here, here's a quick look at that stamp so it's easier to see. So our solid leaf we're going to be doing in the Old Olive and just kind of the detail top one we're going to be doing the Always Hard Choke. If you don't really care for the fern look, you could also do this leaf as well and use that punch. Right. So we're going to start with our leaves. So just that nice base in the Old Olive. And what I like is just kind of having it going up one side and down the other. Now keep in mind, this is kind of a hodgepodge of leaves and acorns, so you can kind of stamp over one or the other. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. It can kind of be buried a little bit under the leaf. You can kind of see that. I'm going to stamp the other way. Hopefully the yard guy's blowing is not being picked up in the video. I apologize if it is. All right, so there's the other one. Come up and do this other side. And you could also do the leaves first if you'd rather do the leaves. If you're worried about having them overlap, you can use the uh, stamp and positioner. There we go. Okay, so we've got our base leaf, and now we're going to go back over those with our darker artichoke on top. Now these are pretty easy to line up because you've got that stem and those top leaves. There we go. It just gives it a little bit of a darker tone. Hopefully you guys are all ready for Thanksgiving which is coming up next week. Got your family plans figured out. All right. Last one. All right. So there you can see we've just got kind of a nice acorn leaf border. Of course, you can add more to it if you want to or do a little less, but that's all we're going to do for today. So the next thing I'm going to do is some sponging. So let's go ahead and br bring that crumb cake back out and my Stampin' Sponge. Get the shot. There we go. Okay. So for sponging with this one, I'm just going to kind of do some light up and down. Hopefully this is not shaking the camera too bad. So light up and down just all over. And I think it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a weathered look. A little more texture to the card. Actually, I think I'm going to pick it up. I'm shaking the camera. And then just kind of a little light brush around the edge for that extra little pop. Actually, it's nice up in the middle. Okay, here we 
go. So we've got some just extra texture to that. So our background is pretty much good to go. See how quick that was? Now we're also going to go ahead and stamp our center with the chocolate chip real quick. And for this you just need a scrap of the very vanilla. It doesn't have to be very big, but you do want it to be large enough that it will fit all in your punch. And grab the center. I did not have that ready to go. Okay, stick that on a block. Well, put it on a little crooked, but that's okay. So we're just going to kind of stamp that in the middle. Because you want to have enough edge for your punch to get all the way around. So we're going to open our punch up, got that nice hinge, and slide our sentiment in. Now if it's a little bigger than the punch, then you'll have a little bit of an edge that you can kind of line it up. If it's smaller, you can stick a post-it note on it just to kind of give you a little more leverage. Once you have it centered like you like, you just give it a nice squeeze. If it's too hard to hold it in the air, you can always stick it against the table and, and press as well. So we've got that. And then with just another piece of the chocolate chip, and actually this is early espresso, so let me grab a piece of chocolate chip. <laughs> there we go. Another piece of chocolate chip. We're just going to stamp an extra one, or punch an extra one, that same shape out. Okay. Now, because the background has so much texture, I feel that it's really nice to add a little bit on the words as well. So we're going to do just, just some quick sponging on our punched words with that crumb cake yet again, just kind of hitting the edges just to make it pop a little bit. Really quick, really easy. See, just a little, a little pop on the edge. All right, so now for our edge. Now you can cut this in half if you wanna have, and maybe we'll do that, so we'll have two different examples. So for just this one, all I did was just offset the side a little bit, so you could just see just that little bit of edge. Now what you can also do with this punch, my paper snips out, is slice it in the center. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center. And you can just offset each side, just like that. So that's another way that you can kind of make this punch a little more diverse. So actually we're gonna do each corner. So we're gonna have two different examples here for the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and start gluing things together. All right, got my multi-purpose liquid glue. You could also do snail if you're more of a snail fan. So, and some glue to the edge of that. And just being sure to line up those two sides so you don't see the top or bottom of the brown, the chocolate chip. Just a little bit of that edge. All right, do the same thing with our other side. Okay. You want to kind of eyeball it so it's about the same width on both sides. It's kind of why I like the liquid glue for this. You can kind of wiggle it a little bit if you don't like it, but there we go. So there's our shape. Let's go ahead and grab our other pieces. So we've got our piece of chocolate chip, which is cut at five and a quarter by four. And of course, our always artichoke card base. Now let's go ahead, put it off to the side, and grab a piece of that wonderful burlap ribbon. Now we don't need a really huge piece, just enough that we can cover uh, the center and just a little extra to kind of tuck under the edges. So we're just going to cut it. Let's see, this ended up being about, about seven inches. That's about what I cut it at. 
All right. So this is where we get to my ribbon trick. Now, if you do have fast fuse, you can, of course, fast fuse line down the side. That works pretty well. Or glue dots. But honestly, I just prefer just taking some standard old tape and taping it down on the back side. It's a little faster. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. You can kind of just make sure that line is straight. Get that other side down. So that's just kind of my little cheat for ribbon edges. All right, got that down. Now let's go ahead and grab our dimensionals. Now, of course, we're using dimensionals on this one. Now, if you don't have the regular size dimensionals, you can also use the mini ones or the strips if you prefer. All right, so we're just gonna peel some of these off. So I always like to do one above and one below the ribbon. So it kind of sandwiches on top. Stick that right in the center, just like that. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and Oh, and this one I glued the brown first, but that's okay. Now we're going to glue that down. If you want to stick dimensionals between the layers, you can. But you don't have to. Right, I'm going to glue this down so we just have that little edge of chocolate chip all around the sides. Just like that. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and glue that to our card front. Now, our other piece of Very Vanilla is for the inside because the darker cardstock colors are really hard to write a note on. So we're going to glue that on the inside. And I'm also going to give you another little suggestion tip for, well, actually, let's stamp it first. So another thing that you can do, and what's really nice with any kind of stamp set that you're doing little borders of, is you can also stamp the inside. And I probably should have done this when I still had everything out, but we'll just do one real quick as an example. So we've got our little old olive leaf. Just like that. And I think that sometimes really ties the front of the card and the inside of the card together when you do that. So here's our artichoke again for that top piece. All right, and we'll just do one little quick tiny acorn. Now what's also really cute is if you wanted to do some leaves on the envelope flap of your card, you could also do them on the back of the card or just on like the back of the envelope is very cute. Just like that. And I may add some more, but you get the idea. Uh, you can also sponge. Yeah, I'm going to add one more. Uh, you can also sponge the edge of this one if you want it to look exactly like the front. Just like that. That's yeah, a little high, but that's okay. All right, and we're just going to stick that in. So you want, if you do something on the inside, you do want to give some room so that you still can write that message but it just kind of ties the front and inside together. All right, and we're just gonna glue this down. Well, thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for direct product links to my Stampin' Up! store for all the products you used in today's video. See, look in the comments below. And uh, do check out my website, michellescraftcorner.com, for more inspiration and tips. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.